Welcome to Joel Asset News. My name is Rob, and today what I want to talk to you about is what is overvalued and what is undervalued. We're going to take a look at stocks and crypto market in general. So let's just jump right in and talk about it. So the first things first, and that is if you want to take a look at undervalued versus overvalued, I want to take a look at what is potentially overvalued right now. And this is what's called the Buffett indicator, market cap to GDP. And it's a, it's a pretty interesting uh, indicator. You can find this at longtermtrends.net, links in the description. And what this is, is in the States right here. It's become popular in recent years thanks to Warren Buffett. Now, before anybody makes fun of Warren Buffett uh, because he hates Bitcoin, he's been a pretty good investor over the last uh, seven decades, so or six or seven decades. So to cut him a little slack, I think he's doing all right. I think he's beating the pants off, uh, uh, off a lot of traditional uh, investors. I think he's going to be okay. And he states this, it's probably this Wilshire 5,000 GP ratio. This is probably the best single measure of where valuations stand at any given moment. This was a interview in 2001, Fortune magazine. So what this is, uh, market, G market cap GDP, is defined as a measure of the total value of all publicly traded stocks in a country divided by the country's GDP. And we can just see right here that what's interesting is, of course, stocks, the total value of all the stocks in the U.S. to uh, the United States GDP. This is just for the United States. And we can see here that during the, the dot-com bubble, uh, we were looking at uh, the, the ratio of about 140%. And from top to bottom, it dropped off about 50%, roughly about 70%. The mean, which you can see right here, is roughly about 85% or so, somewhere around there. And uh, the next one, 2007, when we had the uh, Great Recession, uh, we were at around 105%, somewhere around there. And then we dropped off eh, roughly half again, 55%, 53%, somewhere around there. And as you can see, this mean is supposed to keep us kind of on even kilter. It's going to be more overvalued sometimes, a little undervalued other times, like we've seen back here. But you can just see that stocks in general were massively massively overpriced. November 2021, this is what we had. We had almost 200% overvaluation. And uh, during that time, and you can just see it's a, it's a pretty easy uh, metric to take a look at. So if we take a look at the United States GDP in 2021, it was $23 trillion. This is just goods and services sold and everything that has to entail with that. If we take a look at that and divide that by uh, the total market value of the U.S. stock market, which is uh, $46 trillion at the time. Uh, this is September 30th, 2022. So we can take a look back, maybe around 46, maybe 45 trillion. So 23 and roughly 46, that's about 200 or 200%. And uh, that's where we had, we were massively overvalued. And that's why you heard people like uh, Jeff Bezos talk about like, hey, I think this might be the time for uh, us to sell. And Elon Musk was talking about selling and uh, Pali Hepatia. I was talking about selling and a lot of the big names were selling and they were right. They pretty much called it and uh, it was the top. And now here we are back down to 152%, which I have to tell you, 152% is still higher than the 2000 dot com bubble crash. So I think so far we may still be a little overvalued on some of these stocks. And don't just take my word for it. Uh, this is uh, Stanley Druckenmiller, and we've been talking about this in the show for quite some time. And he comes out and said, look, he goes, I think we're gonna hit some, uh, some pretty lower numbers, and we're not gonna see a return to the all-time highs for 10 years like we did in the mid-60s all the way until uh, late 70s, early 80s. And we can just see here, and we've talked about this many times, uh, we topped out here around 1960, 1968, and didn't return there until uh, 1987, which is quite some time. But along those ways, there's a little bit of peaks and valleys where, of course, you can make some gains, but it didn't hit the all-time highs. It happened again back in the Great Depression, 1929, took us all the way to 1955, happened again, again, 2000, took us till 2014, roughly, to hit those all-time highs of the S&P 500. So when I think about it, what is overvalued, what is undervalued, I think people will listen to a Stanley Druckenmiller because he has been there before. He has been something that uh, people look up to and say, well, this is a great investor who's been around for quite some time. Warren Buffett, same thing. So when they say that this might be some stagnation and maybe some lower prices, I think that people, especially in the traditional market, will go, where do I get 
some more gains? Where do I look for uh, the best upper boundaries for uh, my customers? If I'm a hedge fund or somebody else or institution, where do I go? And me personally, uh, I think that if we take a look at essentially what's going on as far as like the global market cap of, of just stocks itself, this is the, the global stock market. New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, uh, Japan Exchange Group, Shanghai Stock Exchange, Hong Kong, you're next, everybody. They roughly have around $100 trillion, $100 trillion. Again, that's probably a little more inflated. This is in 2020, not 2021. And with this one, again, if you have $100 trillion globally and you have a crypto market, which doesn't even have a trillion anymore, I mean, we're teetering at $800 billion. Uh, today it is January uh, 3rd, 2023. And um, I think if you look at undervalued versus overvalued, stocks are overvalued. And what is undervalued? Probably us. But don't just, just take the market cap for it, because I think we can fall farther. I believe we are going to fall farther. I'll get to that in a second. But if we take a look at what is undervalued right now, there's some great charts you can take a look at for free. Look into Bitcoin.com. Links in the description. This is the MVRV Z score. And what this is, it's a Bitcoin chart that uses blockchain analysis to identify periods where under or overvalued. The market value, which is the blue line, which is multiplied, which is the current price of Bitcoin times the coins of circulation. The realized value, which is the orange line, it uh, takes the price of each Bitcoin when it's last moved. And then the Z-score kind of just takes out all the, uh, all the extremes. So we can see that this Z-score right here, this orangey line, you can tell when things just became massively overvalued, 2017, massively overvalued, 2013, somewhat overvalued, 2021. And that's when it tips into that red area. And the green area is usually times for accumulation or when there is serious serious lag or things are undervalued. That's just the first one. We can also take a look at the Puel multiple. Puel multiple, that's the supply side. This is for Bitcoin miners. It's calculated by dividing the daily issuance value of Bitcoins to the 365 day moving average. And of course, this is all by uh, Bitcoin miners. So when they are being issued their Bitcoin, uh, a little bit too much and they're overvalued, it goes in these red parts. Again, 2017, 2013 teetering in 2021. And again, here we are at an undervalued territory. Let's also take a look at the, the two-year MA multiply. This one, very basic, highlights periods when buying and selling is uh, high or low, uses a moving average in the two-year MA, uses a multiplication of that moving average line, two-year MA times five. And just again, when things are a little bit reddish is when things are overvalued, 2013, 2017. But you see these little green areas? These are good times to buy when Bitcoin was ah, below $2,000, not a bad time. Also, when it was below, whew, below 6,000, 6,000, 4,000. And over here, anything below 37,000, actually 16,000, excuse me, 18,000, 19,000. And the tier MA was 36,000. And over here, oh, excuse me, the price was $235. <laughs> not a bad time to buy. Also price over here, $3,700. So pretty good ones. Again, take a look at that. Look into Bitcoin. You can find that right there. And the last one I use, I can't show it to you right now. I, I, steal, I steal Ben's information from into the cryptoverse. And I, and I put little snippets around here. And I can't show you everything. But this is the time and risk bands. And uh, it's a multiplication created by, by Ben. And you can just it, it, what it takes a look at is the time of the price of Bitcoin. And of course, as uh, the Bitcoin price uh, moves a little bit higher, it's a little bit more riskier, 0.9 to 1.0. Then when the price goes down in certain time frames, in this 0 0.0, 0 0.1, there's only about 120 days that that's actually happened throughout Bitcoin's entire existence. That's the time you really want to go into it. Time when it's like super low as far as the risk level. You know where we're at right now? We're not here. We're not at 0 0.1 to 0 0.2. Right now, as low as the price is, we're at 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Again, can't tell the whole thing, but we're right there, which means I think we have a little bit uh, farther down to go. And the things that will will drop it, I mean, I think we're, un we're undervalued right now. And uh, I personally, in dollar cost averaging, I'm buying Bitcoin every day. We could potentially have some downward slide when stuff like this comes out. I've talked about this many times in the show, contagion from the FTX collapse. 
also contagion from Three Arrows Capital. Mostly what FTX was doing was they, as they pretty much uh, 86th uh, Luna, which brought down 3AC, which brought down Celsius, which brought down Voyager <clears throat> and a host of other companies. So, and now we have something like this. This is uh, Cameron Winklevoss. He is the CEO of Gemini and he wrote an open letter to Barry Silbert. And he is the CEO of DCG Group. And of course, with DCG, they are the, uh, the founders or owners of Genesis, Grayscale, Foundry, and Coindesk, Digital Currency Group. And what he said is this, he goes, look, we have an earned program. Uh, and of course, this was uh, an ability for people who had Genesis, or excuse me, who had Gemini, and they were able to put their crypto and earn massive amounts of yield through this program. Uh, they're not paying anymore because there's an issue with liquidity and other problems. So we put a letter to Barry. He goes, look, we've been trying this for quite some time. It's been months and people aren't able to withdraw. And he goes over the, the whole rigmarole and things that are happening. But the things that stuck out to me was this. Right about here in this last paragraph where it says, you should dispense with this fiction, Barry, because we all know what you know, that DCG and Genesis are beyond co mingled. Look, if you've been around here for a while, you know the words co-mingle is a pretty ugly word. And that is exactly what happened with FTX is they co-mingled user funds with the funds from employees. And that's what they used to buy all their real estate and pretty much uh, let everything collapse in that centralized exchange. And now that's being brought to DCG. And if we have co-mingling of different funds that are going on with uh, different organizations, that is not a good, uh, uh, a good outcome uh, towards the end. Now, hopefully I am wrong, but there was another one more piece that I cannot get out of my mind, which was this. Grayscale refuses to share proof of reserves due to security concerns as shares trade at 44 percent discount to Bitcoin. This is on November 21st, 2022. And of course, Grayscale, they're the ones that allow for investors to invest into Bitcoin that they hold or they say they hold. And it is a large, uh, massive part of what uh, the Bitcoin market is. So if they fold or they have problems and Genesis folds and then Foundry, which is one of the largest Bitcoin mining group out there. And oh yeah, if you take a look at their portfolio, uh, you can see that there is a lot of crypto names that are out there. Now it's a little unclear as if this is free and clear, if these are loans or what uh, these are, but there is a lot of crypto companies that could go down. So or that could potentially be affected, excuse me. So if we take a look at that, I think this. If this happens and we're undervalued right now, does it mean we can't be even more under, uh, undervalued as time goes on? Potentially. And if we take a look at the four-year cycles, which I'm a believer in, in 2015, from the peak to the top, it was an 85% drop. That was in cycle one, which is 2012, 2015. Cycle two, 2016, 2019, from the peak to the top, it was an 84% reduction. Now with cycle three, which was 2020 to 2023, we can just see here that we thought it was in June. From the peak to the top, it was only 71%. People were like, that's it, June is the bottom. I was like, I don't think it is. And of course, we found out that so far in the cycle, it would, the bottom was 15,742, which is only 77%. But you know what's interesting? If we go on down to roughly 10K, when something happens, which I think we could potentially do, not that it is, I don't have a crystal ball, but if we hit around 10K, remember those risk levels? That's pretty much the lowest one that we could see. And that's it. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, like to see more of those, consider subscribing to these things every day. Mostly we talk about the news, but uh, the days a little bit different. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.